Are you looking to start going to craft markets in 2021 or have you been going to craft markets and they weren't that successful? In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys five tips that I have for craft markets and how you can be more successful at them. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Liv and I own designs with Liv on Etsy. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys five tips I have for craft markets that are perfect for if you're looking to go to a craft market for the first time or you're looking to up your game at craft markets in the future. So let's just go ahead and get right into the video. Okay, so the first tip I have, which is probably the biggest, is to make sure you're not sitting the entire time. This is because you want your potential customers to actually come talk to you and if you're sitting and being closed off, it seems like you're not as confident in your work and you're not happy to be there. This is important because you want your customers to come into your booth. If they don't come into your booth, you're not gonna get any sales. So by acting closed off, they're not gonna come and then at the end of the day, you're gonna be sad that you didn't get any sales. The next tip is to not crowd your table. You want to make sure you have enough products to sell the entire day and you want to make sure that you have enough signs to let the customer know how much the product is and what exactly it is without being too overbearing and overwhelming. This is a picture of the first market I ever did back in October and as you can see my table is very crowded. I just stuffed it with a bunch of signs and all of my products at once. So this is something that I don't recommend because it makes your customers feel overwhelmed and they just don't feel comfortable shopping there so they're just going to get up and leave. So in this first picture that I'll pop back up on the screen I had a bunch of signs saying all my pricing and all of my other things and it just looked like too much and that day I didn't do very well actually. I think I only made 50 bucks and a big indicator of that was how I set up my table and how crowded my table was. I also had a lot of decorations on the table that day so it was very difficult for people to actually see my product around the decorations. This is a picture of the craft market I did right before Christmas. As you can see the only decoration I had was the Christmas tree with my ornaments on it. So that was very easy. This was actually one of my best days because I only had two signs on the table, one for the ornaments and one for the cost of my stickers. It was easier for me to keep the table clean and just discuss like if they bought three, they got 15% off or those kind of things instead of just having all the signs all over the table and confusing the customers to how much the stickers actually were and the ornaments actually were. So this was one of my best days. This day I made about $300. So I do feel like the more crowded your table is, the less likely somebody's going to buy because they're going to be overwhelmed. The third tip I have is to be friendly but not too friendly. Of course you're trying to make a sale and sell your product but you don't want to open up or just ramble on and on about a random thing and small talk with your customer until you have that sale. This is because the customer is going to feel as though you're not as confident in your work if you're trying to talk about other things other than what you're selling. So for example, when I'm at a craft market, a customer will come to my booth, I'll say, hey, how are you? and just the basic things and then I'll tell them about my product and tell them if they have any questions they can talk to me and then that's it. I'll just be quiet while I shop and then once they shop I'll say oh this is my favorite sticker or whatever off the branch kind of thing or hey I like your shirt kind of thing. The small talk beforehand kind of deters the customer from actually shopping and picking out what they want to buy and it'll confuse them or make them feel overwhelmed and they'll go somewhere else. I just feel like talking on and on about these kind of things just kind of blocks off the sale a little bit and makes it harder to make the sale in the long run. The fourth tip I have and this is the biggest tip so if you learn anything from this video it should be this tip and it is to make sure to accept credit cards. Square is a service that gives you a free credit card reader that you plug into your phone or your tablet and you can very easily accept credit cards this way. This makes it easier at craft markets because not everybody has cash and especially during COVID times, you don't want to be accepting cash if you don't know where that person had been. You want your customer to be able to swipe the card to the phone and of course, if they only have cash, then you want to make sure you still have change just in case, but don't be an only cash shop because not everybody has cash. Making sure that you accept credit cards is a good way to get your customer to come and purchase something. I will leave a link down below for a free $1,000 in processing fees 
for Square. So Square takes about 3% or less of your processing fees from your credit card. So it ends up being a couple cents per transaction. So it's really not that bad, but you can save $1,000 if you go click this link down below and you don't have to pay processing fees for the first $1,000 that you make. And the fifth and final tip that I have for you is to have fun. You're there to make money, but you're also there to have a good time. You don't want to act bored when you're standing there at your booth. You want to let your customers know you're having a good time. Have a smile on your face, especially with a mask on. You want your customers to see your facial expressions through your eyes. So just let them know that you're smiling with your eyes and just have a good time. Customers will pick up on whether you're having a good time or not and if you're not having a good time and they can see that from the walkway then they're not going to stop by so you want to just make sure that you're having fun and especially at the end of the day if you don't make a lot of sales but you still had a good time then that's still a good day in my opinion so and one last thing to remember is that if you didn't make any sales during a craft market that is not an indicator of the quality of your work a lot of factors go into making a sale such as the weather outside the amount of customers there are the type of customers there are and also what time of the year it is some people don't shop year-round so it's harder to get a sale from somebody that's not looking to purchase something, possibly not for themselves, but for someone else as well. So you just have to remember that all those things come into play when you're making sales at craft markets. And if you didn't make any or if you didn't make enough to make a profit, then it's not an indicator of your work and you still have great work. So you can't get down on yourself if you have that mentality going into it. All right, guys, so those are my five tips for craft markets. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something. If you have any other tips for anybody, please leave them down below in the comments. I'd love to learn from other people as well. And while you're down there, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I upload videos every Wednesday and Friday and I will see you guys on Friday for another studio vlog. Bye.